Hello, hello, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Big O Blogs on Diabetes, trying to help, and help himself with the diabetics. Diabetes, actually. Um, this morning I, I got up here and I, um, I made a breakfast. And I hadn't, this is a breakfast you don't make, I don't make every day, right? Because it involves, it includes um, codfish, salted codfish. And that is not something I get to buy every day. I have to go to a specialty store to get it here. And um, it's a far away. So when I go, I get maybe two pieces, three pieces, and I keep them and I, I may cook it once or twice, once in a while, you know. But it's a very popular dish in the Caribbean. Uh, most, a lot of Caribbean islands eat something called saltfish, uh, salted codfish or saltfish. And it's very popular with rice or with, as breakfast with bread or with uh, homemade bread, flat bread called bake. Okay. And um, I, since I know I'm not going to do this often, I'm going to do a video on it this morning. Uh, one thing about it is it's very salted. <clears throat> And it's known that people say don't eat that because it's not good for your blood sugar it's not good for your pressure it's not good for your reflux it's not good for anything because it's too salted but long ago before there were refrigerators uh, i grew up we had we didn't have a refrigerator we eat everything salted uh, we had salted pork salted beef and salted cutfish because the fish can stay outside in the salt without being refrigerated and that's where that became popular but then now with all the modernized um, things we have, we don't need to salt anything anymore. But for that taste we were used to in the past, a lot of people still like salted meat in their food, especially in the Caribbean. So salt, I, I do, I love salt fish and bake. I love it. I would make it for any time we have breakfast event. It's one of the top food you can supply to a Caribbean group, especially. I don't know if in the U.S. Um, how they use cutfish, like salt, salted cutfish like this. I'm not 100% sure. But I know Caribbean people living in the U.S. or descendants of Caribbean people still do it. I love it. And I thought it was appropriate uh, because I'm expecting people from all over the world to be seeing my video. And it may or may not affect you, but if you do eat salt, cut, salt fish and bake or salt fish and rice or salt fish or anything, you would like to know how it affects your blood sugar because I never tested it before. So this is my first test on eating salt fish. And I make sure I take out the salt because what you do is you soak that soak that, soak that cut fish till as much of the salt come out as possible to where it's barely have any salt in it. So you don't have to add salt back to this food when you cook it because you're taking out all the salt by washing in hot water or boiling it a different way. I'm not sure how I cook it because a lot of videos of you know how to cook salt fish. I'm just mostly focused right now on when I eat it with the, with the flat bread or the bake, how will it affect my blood sugar? So this, this looks like this. This is what the swordfish looks like. See that? So here's the cut fish. That's tomatoes, onions, and green seasoning and so on. It. And then here's the here's my um, flat bake. I made this bake myself. Uh, this doesn't have any um usually I try to avoid making bread or bake with pure flour. I usually use almond flour mix three quarter. But in this case, that almond flour mix would not hold. The dough good enough to eat salt fish properly so I, I i take a chance that i'm using straight regular bleached flour um but but i'm gonna meant i'm gonna control the portion see so i'm eating this portion that's not a lot right small make a small flat bake and a small amount and that so it's good enough to, for me to enjoy and have good taste in my mouth and really enjoy this kind of traditional um caribbean meal without eating too much because you can also control your sugar by the amount of sugar you put in your body see so this, this bake is gonna have carbohydrates which is gonna convert the sugar right so I'm expecting a, a, a spike but I'm hoping it's gonna stay within my range okay so my range is if you watch my videos my range is under 140 or under 180 anything come back over 200 over 180 I don't eat it anymore so what I do is a combination I look for so I know I know if I come back over over I know if I come back over 180 is either the bake or the salt fish in this case, right? So I wouldn't be a hundred percent which one it is. Uh, but I had tested the flour before. So I know the flour is gonna give me a spike. If I go over 180 
I know the soil pressure data too because why? I know I know my expectation of the flower before or the, or the bit because I did that before. So I know that I don't know the soil fish with it. So the ending spiking higher than what I expect will be the soil fish adding to it. Okay? That's how I evaluate my combinations. I use my previous knowledge, my historical knowledge of different ones I've tested before. And when I add a new one, I see the difference in the spikes. Right? So I'm not doing one, I'm doing a whole meal. So this meal this morning is bacon saltfish. Bacon saltfish. So let me show you what I'm starting with. My fasting blood sugar this morning. I um, usually take care of myself real good. So in the night, I make sure I don't over, I don't eat too late. So my fasting blood sugar is 81. So I wake up this morning and I eat, eat for the morning, I eat a drink. And I'm going, I'm starting at 81, which I like being around here when I get up. Before I started taking care of myself and doing these tests, testing on my food, I could never get up under 140. Right? It was terrible. You know, I was really sick then and feeling really terrible then and scary. But I know I have it under control because I know the food I'm eating, how it affects me. I'm usually getting up between 80 and 100 every morning, which is pretty good. Okay. So, but I have to maintain that by continuing eating different food. I don't want to eat the same food every time. So the more food and the more range I have is better. That's why I'm looking for my range. All right. So I'm going to eat this, this bacon saltfish and I'm going to come back in about an hour and a half and let you guys know how this affected my blood sugar. So if you like this in the Caribbean or anywhere you are, you can enjoy it, but you need to stop it. All right, let's see what's gonna happen, okay? Blessings, I'll be back in a minute after I enjoy this, all right? Oh, by the way, how you eat this is you break your, you break your bread, you break your dough, and you, you, you grab it up like this, see? And you grab yourself fish up like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yes, mm. Let me tell you something. This is a good food. We scared to eat this often because of we scared the unhealthiness of it. But it's good. You know? So I'm gonna put my plate down and sit down and really enjoy it. And the taste the way I did it with the onions and the garlic and stuff, its flavor is oh my god. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Flavor, flavor, flavor. And when you cook the, the, the bake this flat, I use a, a flat a flat bed maker, like what they call a tower. It comes out perfectly. No oven or anything. Straight on the stove on that tower on the stove. Make it flat like that, flip it on both sides. Mmm. Flavor everywhere. So I'm enjoying this. Hope it doesn't hurt me. But it can be once if it does. Anyway, let's see, alright? I'll be back. Blessings. Love you. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for staying around to see the results of my breakfast this morning. So as you know, I had the, the saltfish bojao with the bake or flat bread. Um, this is my first time testing that. And I know that the, um, the, the, the carbohydrates in the bake was going to give me a little spike. But in the past, had been it had been reasonable with other things, so um, I never had it with saltfish. So this morning, I had the saltfish, and here's my uh, here's my results. Um, 150, 150 after hour and a half. So I actually did it twice because I was kind of like I want to make sure that I get the right measurement in that. So if you can look at it here, you'll see it. I was 81. And 158 and 150. So, on my second five minutes later, I did it a um, second time, and it, it's still around 150 something. So 158. So this this food, I would I would I, you can eat it, but I didn't hit my target with it because my target is under 140. So it wouldn't be a breakfast I like to eat every day or too often, and I don't. But at least I know now that when I do eat it. It would get me under 180, which is fine for type 2 diabetic, but it would not get me under my 140, which is where a normal person would be. So that's not what the food I would eat to keep me normal. Because my goal is to eat in a way that my blood sugar acts normal like a person who is non-diabetic. And the only way I can do that is by eating the right food that I measured and I tested and I know will not spike my blood sugar past 140 after hour and a half. 
And once I consistently eat those kinds of meals, I will be keeping my blood sugar normalized like a person who never had diabetes. See, a person without diabetes could eat anything they want and be under 140. No problem, right? But I, we can't do that when you have type 2 diabetes. So people talk about rolling it back it and getting rid of it. I don't think you could really get rid of it. But in my, for me, I'm talking about, so because I try that and I just never get rid of it. But I could control it and make it look normal by eating the right food. And that's my goal. To eat the right food that keeps my blood pressure, my blood sugar normal under 140, always after one half hour, like a regular person who has no diabetics. And that way I'm living and feeling like a non-diabetic person. So I can say I roll back my diabetes, but only when I eat the right food. Because if I play stupid or play silly, whatever you want to say, I call myself silly all the time with this, and I go on and I eat whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, guess what? Or it didn't roll back. It's going to spike and go crazy. And I hurt myself really bad. So I know in order to act and believe I'm normal and feel normal is managing my food. My food intake. And the only way I can do that is by knowing the food. Testing, testing, and identifying. you got to become your own scientist. you got to know what you're eating and how it affects you. And like I said, if you want to live long and not be a statistics with the over 80 million U.S. With diabetes and millions around the world with diabetes check yourself then take care of yourself monitor your blood sugar take your medicine and monitor it and then balance your medicine with good eating if you eat right you may not even need to take the medicine like i don't take much medicine for it as long as i eat constantly eat right but i still take a half a pill because i'm doing this, this study and this research where sometimes I eat something that spikes me up high, so I make sure I have the, I'm taking the, half, a, half a pill of the medicine just for that. But once I um, have identified a very good range of food over the years, I wouldn't need to take the medicine as long as I eat those food. So those food become my medicine. You see? Good food become my medicine. And so far, I'm doing great. I usually only spike when I choose to spike, when I choose to eat something, to try something new. But I pretty much have a good repertoire of, repertoire of food that I can eat that I never spikes that high if I... So I'm doing a good job for the last two years or so with myself doing that. And it also helped me maintain my weight and keep my body healthy and feeling good. And that's what I want to share with you guys. So thank you. Thank you. So no bacon salt fish. It's not, it's a three star, a big old three star for me. Um, it's between 140 and 180, but it's kind of close to 140, 158, 150. So I will eat it again. Uh, definitely once a month or so when I'm feeling for that taste. But I definitely not going to eat it as part of my routine breakfast diet to keep me under 140. All right. So hope we learned something. I learned something. So now I know what to do with saltfish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And blessings. Share my video. If you like what I'm saying, what I'm doing, share it. You have to be committed to this. You have to commit to your life, committed to your health, and committed to long life. And still, I can eat all these nice foods and enjoy these tastes. Sometimes, every now and then, not always, but know when and which one. And if you plan to eat one of them that's bad, Make sure in the diet, make sure and be on a, on, a, on a fasting and that you was really low. So when you eat it, the spike will not be that high. So you start off at like 80 and you eat something bad once a month and you jump it to 160, uh, you're okay. Right? But don't eat something bad but when you're already high, like 200, eat something bad again. Right? That's why you need to know your body and know your, know your measurements. And your so measure, measure, measure and stay safe. All right? Blessings. Love you. Thank you for coming back. Share, like, subscribe, whatever it takes. To let other people know this, man, and enjoy this, all right? And live good. Control the spikes to enjoy life. Big O is out of here. Bye.